Welcome to the Kaler Podcast, episode 16. This time we're going to talk about what it was like in the 80s. How you doing today, Gary? Do I look like Gary to you? I'm not Gary. I'm your friend Tom from 1985. Oh my God, yes you are. Boy, (laughs) wasn't that clever what we just did. Gary is away in California on business because he is a great big important businessman. So while the Gary is away, the Eddie will play. And uh, my buddy Tom is here, and we are actually going to make this about Kaler because Tom is a master machinist from Boeing who, God, we were just talking about this. Uh, You graduated from Voctech School in 1988. Yes. And you've been a machinist ever since. Yes. Except for that little break where both you and I worked in a bakery. Yes. Big, huge industrial bakery that was how many city blocks? It, well, it, it was a few. What was it, about six? Something like six that. Six or eight? Yeah, the, ga- the Gay's Bakery. And it was, what, it was like three or four stories? Uh, yeah, and it was insane. A whole lot of it was uh, conveyors and, and yeah. ovens. Oh, God. Being on top of oh. an oven, yeah. When we, yeah, when we had to clean that oven, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we will be talking about Kaler stuff, and we're going to get the uh, the opinion of a master machinist at Boeing of uh, what these bridges are like. But let's have a little bit of fun first, because uh, we were supposed to be in Las Vegas decades ago. <laughs> We yeah, des- we didn't quite make it. No, no. We decided as a couple long-haired teenagers to uh, just go to Las Vegas for whatever reason. Um, and we kind of got detained in Idaho in a very, very Dukes of Hazard style Roscoe Pico train <laughs> speed trap. And we uh, spent... Uh, what was it about three days in uh, in a celebrity jail cell? You know, it was a long time ago. I couldn't stay for sure, but I was able to read most of the book Carrie. I don't remember what I was doing, but I do remember it was this little one horse town in the middle of the desert in southern Idaho uh, called Murphy. Same name as your dog at the time. Aww. Oh, Murphy. He was such a good boy. And uh, in Owyhee County. Did you remember Owyhee County? Oh, of course I did. I, re- I didn't remember Murphy. And that fancy court building and the airstrip were both made for the guy who stayed in the cell that we were in, Claude Dallas. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, you boys get to stay in Claude Dallas's cell. My God. Every single time place we went from the cop that picked us up on the side of the road to the uh, the judge the you know anybody we ran into on that on that trip even the even the 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 long-term guy who was making our uh uh hamburger helper meals oh my god yeah that was the crazy thing too this place was so mayberry that the town drunk Actually, yeah. <laughs> the town drunk had he was it, a real Cletus. <laughs> he he stayed in uh, no, it was Otis. Otis was Otis, that it? the yeah. town drunk. Yeah, uh, he uh, he was he was in a cell that they didn't lock, and he uh, <laughs> he could he could go in and out, and then he would uh, he would cut the grass, and he would uh, and he would make the meals and all that. Yeah, it was just weird. And I've not been back to Idaho since. Not really much there to go back to. God, well, not in Southern Idaho. No, no. Northern Idaho has the biggest lake west of the Mississippi. Is Lake Chelan really that big? It's Pond- Lake Ponderé. Oh, is it Ponderé? And Lake Ponderé is so big, it has a, the Navy put a nuclear sub in it. Really? Yeah. It's been there. For, uh, I don't know if it's still there. Yeah, my grandparents used to own a floating house on that lake. It was really cool. That was where I wanted to go. And if we would have went there, uh, we it would have saved us a lot of grief. Probably wouldn't have got arrested. Yeah. More than likely wouldn't have heard those crazy people with the four by fours and the, whoop, the whoop. guns <laughs> sitting there getting ready to park in our windowless oxidized van. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, all these people start tearing past us in four by fours as the sun's going down. And uh, well, I thought we found the perfect camping spot. Oh yeah, it was nice and secluded. So all these people, like once, it did just like probably about fifty four by fours just ripping past us. 
and you could hear them all going nuts and then all the engines stopped and then it was just nothing but gunfire and then the gunfire stopped and they all went whoop 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 and it was like we gotta get out of here man <laughs> but now we're both in las vegas my god finally yes yeah so what do you think of the place um, it's, uh, it's a lot to take in. I mean, there are a lot of guitars and, uh, uh, there's a lot about it that's really impressive on a lot of different scales and a lot of different levels. The, the sections that you guys have gotten up to speed yeah. are really looking impressive. Now, I know that you've gotten a chance to look really, really, uh, hard at these, uh, at these bridges. In fact, I've kind of insisted on a few. What do you think of the tolerances? Well, you know, the the tolerance would be something that's listed on the print. Yeah. And and so I really don't know what he said his tolerance at, but but they really have to be exact. You can tell that just by looking at them. Oh yeah. And the 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 way that they're able to reproduce consistently, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really says a lot about however they're doing this process. These things are so solid and they're gorgeous. They're just gorgeous. They, I mean, from a yeah, a machining standpoint, they, I'm I'm blown away every time I see another one, and the in the just uh, all the ingenuity. They're so ingenious. The uh, uh, the the different ways that they work, and uh, and yeah, and and applications. It's it's really cool. I'm I'm more accustomed to seeing the you know the the Floyd. The Floyd. Yeah, yeah. That it tends to be a much more popular model, and usually what we see, well, what I see are usually kind of like ghetto knockoff Floyds, like, oh, yeah. and, you know, made in China. And, and then they seem to throw those onto everything. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, and so seeing these, these are truly on another level. I look at the price points for some of them. Oh yeah. And when I know the kind of time and effort that it took to produce some of these, looking at all the detail and, and just, you know how much micro detail is in these, yeah. And I'm I'm almost shocked at the at the price that you guys for American made stuff of this quality. Really, the the price point is really almost a surprise because I would think it could be much more if we priced them the way that we should, which is uh, three hundred percent markup. <laughs> so I'm not kidding too. Like, let's say that you're gonna buy. Uh, brand X uh, bridge and it costs three hundred dollars, right? So that three hundred dollars, the uh, the wholesale price would be a hundred, you know, so that that whole so that the retailer could knock fifty bucks off and make you feel really good about getting a deal. And they're still making one hundred and fifty bucks on that thing. That means that the manufacturer had to sell it to them. For somewhere around fifty bucks, our margin we sell directly to the consumer because we're too expensive for OEMs. Most OEMs, there are some some people that are still like, you know what, we'll pay what it costs. We don't care. But yeah, that order for BC Rich is really exciting. Yeah, I just got a big order for BC Rich. We're about to talk uh, talk to a couple other people. Uh, the thing that I'm really excited about is uh, seeing who wants to use the new Steelers, you know, those things are just really, really good. You know, I mean, obviously you're going to have to change your marketing uh, tactics drastically because well, uh, you're not, you're not really trying to get hundreds of them put on a whole production order. Yeah. You're trying to reach the, the individual guy out there and help him understand what the actual difference is. You know, and it can be hard because the Floyd is not a bad product. No, it's you know, and it's fantastic. And, but I, yeah, I am just blown away by how superior the Kaler actually is. And you know, when it comes down to the end, mm -hmm. the function. Because oh, yeah. I mean, if they both do exactly the same thing, exactly the same way, yeah. and there's no difference in what they produce, then why not go with the cheap one? But uh, the capability of the Kaler. I mean, maybe you have to be kind of a connoisseur to want to have that extra ability. Yeah. But uh, I am. I'm blown away just by the all the different ways that that he's uh, you know applied the technology. You know, uh, not just uh, using a fulcrum point on a wedge, but mm -hmm. uh, doing rollers and cams and stuff. It's uh, it's really amazing all the different effects that his uh, bridges will produce. Yeah, uh, Gary is truly genius. I, it's inspiring to to see him to see his ma mind working. 
I think that uh, as as long as there's some sort of adversity going on that's challenging the company, it that's what keeps him alive. He well, does seem to run on on that kind of uh, uh, fight back kind of drive. Oh, he's a scrapper, man. That's yeah. for sure. You know, you can see that uh, that Nebraska farm boy come out when he gets upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. And then he'll sit there and he'll look at me every now and then and say, all right, listen, you need to just let that one go. And I'll be like, oh, and he'll be like, let me tell you about this time back in Frankfurt. And I'll be like, oh, okay. We just did like great big things on custom stuff that people will, they'll just, you know, write in and say, I really want this, but it doesn't exist. And he'll go, hmm, challenge accepted. And uh, the next thing you know, we've got a 10 string uh, extreme multi-scale that, you know, just there it is, thousand bucks, and it's like I'll pay it because nobody else will make this. That's really cool. But let's talk about some fun '80s stuff. Oh sure. So yeah, so we met in 1985 at Continuation High School. You uh, you walked up to me and we're like, "Hey, how's it going?" And I remember you had aviator sunglasses on. And <laughs> oh no! That leather jacket with the KISW rock sticker on the back of, of it. And, and back uh, when it was 100. Oh, it's not anymore? No, it's 99.9 now. It has been for over a decade. Uh, sticklers. Is it, do they still play music or is it all crap like this now? <sighs> uh, they have talk shows. They have uh, a lot of talk shows. Yeah, they, they have one that's called The Men's Room. The Men's Room. Yeah, and, and it's this crew of five guys that, and they still have to take music breaks. It's amazing the changes that have happened to uh, to our home state. It's kind of a disappointing thing everywhere right now. Yeah. And, you know, I don't pretend to be a political scientist and, and understand a lot of it. All right. Let's get back to 1985. Sure. I actually didn't have to go to Continuation High School. Like most people there, they were like, this is your last chance before you just can't go to school at all. I didn't have that problem. I went to basically the freaking school in Stepford where being a long-haired heavy metal kid just was not acceptable. And so I went to continuation because I wanted to be around my people. And good golly, was everybody there my people. I didn't get one credit when I went to continuation high school. Uh. The only classes I went to were guitar and forestry. <laughs> and forestry was not with a teacher. No. Most of us went to forestry, though. Yeah, and it's just the trails behind the school where you would uh, go and find this, this mythical bush. There's only been one other like it. It was uh, written about in this very, very famous book, a bush that smoke would come from, but it never burned. And that was forestry class was uh, somehow we had a, a mythical bush that uh, that smoke came from all the time, but it never burned. Well, it was smoky out there. All right. It sure was. <laughs> and I will never forget my last week, the last week of continuation high school. Um, we were playing kickball in the field. We were playing kickball in the field and with the teachers and the teachers were partaking in burning bush uh uh sacrament uh, i think you're safe they're all old and dead now they're all old and dead well i'm <laughs> trying to speak in in code just sure. in case anybody might get offended yeah so we're sitting there ironically enough as you have two slayer guitars behind you we're sitting there in 1985 uh you know, playing kickball in the field next to the school, somebody's got a boom box and they're cranking um, whatever the latest Slayer album was, uh, probably, probably Rain and Blood. I think it was Rain and Blood, yes. I don't know. That might have come out in 86. Maybe it was, uh, maybe, because it wasn't Haunting the Chapel, because it was, that's only three songs. Um, it was probably Show No Mercy, actually. I don't know. But anyway, um, Beautiful day. I was feeling happy from the uh, from the uh, burning bush sacrament, and looking around, and I just thought this is the greatest thing. I'm, I've never been happier, and that's why I have to go back to regular school because I am going to like not get my diploma or my GED or anything, and I can't tell you guys 
because you're going to try to talk me out of it, and it'll be easy for you to talk me out of it because I don't want to do it. Yeah, you just up and disappeared on I us. just disappeared, and yeah. um, certain people took offense to that, which is unfortunate. <sighs> But uh, how dare you? How dare I? Uh, and then, and then you uh, and uh, and uh, Charlie, the other guy who uh, is no longer with us, and I'll, sadly, yeah. I'll I'll put a link to uh, to Charlie's eulogy in here. You guys kind of got uh, invited to leave. Well, yeah, I mean, where you you decided to follow Charlie to continuation. You, yeah, I think you were probably one of the only people there who uh, intentionally decided to go to that school. Yeah. Um, yeah, myself, I was, uh, I had other people inviting me to go there. I, I had actually come from a regular high school. And uh, in in my first month of that year, uh, the, the, I got called into the, the principal's office and he explained to me that I had 29 absences in 25 days. And I wasn't good at, enough at math to argue with him about it. So um, uh, he suggested to me that maybe the school wasn't a right fit for me, and and maybe continuation would would be a a better a better fit for me. The problem with forestry class is that it can run all day long, and you can end up missing all the other classes that are actually on your schedule. Yeah, what ultimately pushed me out of continuation, the principal there at continuation had put me on a contract yeah. where I had to attend at least two one-hour classes a week for a month. That seems beyond reasonable. Oh, I know. that. Yes. But, uh, yeah, we were, the month was nearly up, and I was nowhere close to achieving my two classes per wow. week. And, uh, and so he called me in, and he was like, you know, we're going to have to talk about this again. And... Um, I didn't really even give him the opportunity. Okay. I had been on a uh, field trip, right. you know, because uh, forestry and field trips, that was kind of my major while I was there. Yeah. Uh, but I'd been on a field trip. We did a lot of field trips when I was there too. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was entertaining. Ed left first and then um, I was getting pressure and Charlie was in the same boat as I was. Yeah. Then uh, I went home and, and talked to my dad about, uh, uh, you know, I don't think my, I don't think I've got much time left at this current school and I need to go find something else to do. Uh, I hadn't even been actually thrown out of continuation. That would really be a mark. To, Boy, to, yeah, right? <laughs> yes, but, but yeah, and so I quit before I got fired. Honestly, I make jokes about, uh, about being kind of dopey at the time. Um, but, but there was some dope involved. There was some dope involved. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't a dummy though. I wasn't an idiot. No. And, uh, uh, yeah, I went, uh, I, I d didn't miss a single day at the tech college. And not only that, I ended up taking a full load of day classes and night classes, and then still had time to come home and do dopey things. <laughs> After uh, two and a half years there, I ended up uh, graduating first in my class of 185 with yeah. a four-point GPA. That is impressive. And I was at your graduation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and right before your graduation, we had a cop pull his gun on us. Yes. <laughs> because we pulled over to do dopey things on the way to my graduation. That's and, right. And yeah. do dopey things is all the more you're going to get out of us. But <laughs> Whatever you're thinking it was, probably all those things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know what? I think I was your only friend. It was like uh, your mom, your dad, and me went to your graduation, right? Or was, uh, did your my grandparents? My sister, my older ha uh, uh, Patricia adopted sister. Okay, yes, cool. Patricia was there as well. Yeah. yeah, now when I graduated from dive school, my family did not go at all. It was you and it, Louis? your dad. No, he was in Arizona. Oh, oh okay. And um, I don't know. It's yeah, it was you and you and your dad. And I don't. I think your mom was and wasn't even well enough to well, go. Well, she was sick for a long time. Your mom was had been sick since the day I met her. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Unfortunately, in more ways than one. <laughs> the first time I went over to Tom's house. We get over there, we walk into his house, and he's like, "Hey, man, you want a beer? I keep them in my toilet." <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, no toilet beer for me. Thank you. And he was like, no, it keeps them really cold in the toilet. No, it's really good. And I was just thinking, ew. And it was like the tank. like Yeah, the tank behind, not the bowl. Yeah. Like how many times did somebody flush the toilet and there was no water because it was displaced by a bunch of beer <laughs> Uh, I was trying to be a conservative. Conserve water. This yes. Is very important. Let's do God. Let's steer this back to guitar. Oh, I thought we were doing pretty good. I think so too. You know what? You got to keep it light. One of the coolest places in Federal Way, and you were in walking distance, was performance music. I took my first bass lessons there. I think you took some lessons there, right? Yes. I also got my first guitar there. Yep. And uh, and my first amp. Yep. And that was, you know, early 80s. Early, early. Yeah, yeah like 82, 83-ish. Yeah. That was the first place I ever saw Jackson. Oh, wow. You remember the Jacksons, how they had like, what was it like, it was either three or four tiers of guitars. I mean, here, um, in most of this room, there are two tiers of guitars, but at performance, the, it was such a high place. I can't remember if it was three or four, but I want to say four. Uh, to be fair, it was kind of a small building, kind of a small room. But it was high. Yeah, it was very high. And they didn't have uh, a lot of uh, wall space to work with, so they yeah. didn't have much choice but to go up like that. They kept a, a wide variety of actual professional instruments. They did. It wasn't your typical strip mall. Uh, no. yeah, they, they, they were real musicians and they had professional instruments. It was at, at affordable prices. At too. affordable prices. And, and man, I'll tell you what, I will never forget seeing those Jacksons and just like, just, oh, <laughs> they're so cool looking. And the one that I will never forget, Jackson just had the weirdest airbrush paint jobs on them. Oh, and, I thought they were gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But there was one that's just burned into my head. I will never forget it. It was like outer space on the front of the guitar, which is always cool. Yeah. That's always cool. And then right behind the bridge, huge, was a wizard. And it was like <laughs> space wizard. Oh, uh, makes no sense. Super awesome. <laughs> you know? <laughs> We were listening to Black Sabbath, and very little of that made any sense, anyways. Right, yeah. or uh, or Led Zeppelin. If you, well, if you're a Tolkien, Led Zeppelin made sense, but I didn't because it was too many pages. <laughs> <laughs> Just couldn't do Ain't it. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's right, not me. <laughs> I think I've had like two girlfriends that were like, "You should really read Lord of the Rings," and I was like, nah, "I'm good." Even to this day, when I'm having a real bad night and I just can't sleep. Yeah, I put on any of those Lord of the Ring movies, and I'm out in like five minutes. I oh, barely get past the opening credits. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, they're they're cinematic triumphs. I hear. Uh, <laughs> I I forced myself to watch the first one, and I got 15 minutes in the second one, and went, nope, I can't do it. Just can't do it. They're great. I know that people love them. Probably going to get a lot of angry comments. Don't hate just because I don't appreciate it doesn't mean that you can't it just uh, means more for you you can have my share i will gladly <laughs> let you have it uh, uh, i i remember the huge surge of the lord of the rings stuff in the 70s in oh the god the, 70s. The, the cartoon and all that yes, stuff and, yes i mean that it was really hot then and right around the same time that the hobbit cartoon was a big uh watership down Oh, do you yeah, remember that? Yeah, the one with the rabbits. Yeah, the yeah. one with the ra God, that was a that uh, was a hardcore real disturbing. Oh yeah, yeah. man, they said they bring us to watch this as little kids in some weird rundown theater in the middle of Seattle, and it was just like this is so depressing. The rabbit died in the middle of a rainstorm or something. He's like, and he's like blood running out its neck, and uh. it's just like, good God. You know, and then they wondered why we grew our hair long and wanted to play heavy metal. <laughs> well, that was more about uh, wanting to be rebellious and wanting to fight the system and wanting to be on the opposite side of the, you know, the, the control. You know what? For me, it was a complete and total inability to fit in. I wanted to be a uh, cog in the machine. I just wanted to get, and it was just like, no, we don't like you. We won't have you. And I was just like, oh, oh what am I ever going to, am I ever going to do? And then Charlie from earlier said, Hey man, you ever hear of a band called iron maiden? And I lied 
Awesome. And I lied and I said, of course I've heard of Iron Maiden. I mean, I go to Surprise Lake Middle School. I'm a man of the world. <laughs> why, why, why wouldn't I have heard of Iron Maiden? Why would you, why, why do you ask? And he said, this guy wants to trade me an Iron Maiden record for, uh, for my Copenhagen hat. You remember those yeah. Copenhagen painter's hats? Oh, yeah. My family was so desperately poor, I wanted one of those hats. All the cool kids had one. I couldn't hope to have one. Charlie yeah. got one. Now, like I said, I lied. I don't know who Iron Maiden is. Might be the best decision ever, but this is the f***ing hat we're talking about. I lied and said, that, oh, no, don't do it. They suck. And he, and he did it anyway. And the moment that I heard The Prisoner, oh, yeah. everything clicked into place. And I was like, oh, you mean if I get rejected, I could just be like, oh, all right. Well, if you're not with me, you're against me. And that means I don't have to worry about what happens to you. If, uh, okay, no, this is, this is good information. Thank you, Iron Maiden. And, uh, you know what? I have lived my life according to that ever since getting back to, uh, performance and Jackson's and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, so it's really wild and ironic that, you know, Gary is really good friends with Grover Jackson. In fact, Grover Jackson. Isn't it was? No. Oh, okay. They're still friends. Oh, they're, okay. Yeah, Grover's still with us. Bernie Rico is not. And oh, it was okay. like Gary, Grover, and Bernie were like pretty tight. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Grover actually introduced Gary to uh, Dave Story. Or maybe he didn't introduce him. He just told him about him. All these years ago, staring at Jackson's, I never would have imagined that I'd be sitting in a place with a guy who's got everything to do. With Jackson, and you know what the coolest thing was? That guitar right there, that Aria. You, you guys get that R E A? Yeah, I pronounced <laughs> it right. Aria. Yes. And it's the guy's name, not the opera term. That Aria Night Warrior. You remember the the ads in Guitar Player magazine for it? To the victor goes the spoils and stuff like you know. So I used to sit and stare at that guitar at at performance music and just look at it and think that is the coolest thing. I will never be able to afford that guitar. God, that what a shame. <laughs> Decades later, for whatever reason, I woke up and I remembered it and I was like, I must have one. I searched for one. I found one. I got it. And then a couple years after that, Gary Kaler is sitting in, uh, in my kitchen and I brought it out like a little kid showing somebody the picture that they're going to put on the fridge. And I'm like, look, I got, I got, there was this, and then you made the bridge, you see? And then, and it's, and, 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 and he was, well, good for you. That's, that's very nice. And, it was just, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care. Cause that was awesome. That was like, you know, you would just have to know the struggle to know what a big deal that was to me. And I mean, it, even it, it, at 53 years old, that was a big God, you're deal. getting old. I know. Yeah, I'm 54. How old are you again? I don't. That Gibson Designer Series over there, you had you had a picture. You had a magazine ad on your wall that had that guitar on it yeah, in your teenage right. bedroom. Uh, was, I stuck so many things up on that wall. You certainly did. Yeah. And now you own that house. Uh, well, kind yeah, of, sort of. Yes. Kind of. You yeah. co-own with your brother. Yeah. And rent it out because you've got your own house that's bigger and better. I, you know, did the whole deal. Yeah. Children, uh, career, and uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't go the route of professional musician or even uh, even a uh, music based career. No, I, uh, but uh, manufacturing did pretty well for me. Uh, my son has also followed in my footsteps, and he is doing amazingly well. And and I can't. Uh, uh, I can't even begin to talk about how how proud I am of of him. He's just amazing, and, and my daughter is an incredibly intelligent young woman, and and very capable. And uh, she she and her husband, uh, he's from Australia, and uh, he's just become a U.S. citizen. Oh, that's and, cool. Yeah, and they're both living together with me for right now. Well, uh, uh, well, he was going through the citizenship process. Yeah, and my elder stepdad. It, that's right. Three years old. Now uh, this is a just a fun little turn of events. 
uh, Tom here, much like me, black sheep of the family. And here you are taking better care of your father <laughs> than he took of you. And you repaired all the crap in the house that you grew up in. Oh, that was a nightmare. I bet it was. I really... I I got to see that house. I got to see that house re- well, redone. Well, yeah, it's it's really gorgeous now. And I, and walking into it, you would hardly even know that it was the same house. Uh, yeah, it is my plan to retire there. And, and maybe one of my kids will end up taking over the other house. And my son's gone and bought his own house. Yeah. Yeah, 25 years old in the Seattle market. It's not really very easy to buy a house. No. But uh, he's, he's, uh, he's really making it happen. And this is another thing that's kind of fun, too, with the whole black sheep thing and all that. Yeah. Is that Tom might be the best father in all of recorded human history. (laughs) Goes to court, gets full custody of his kids in Washington State. That's unheard of. That they don't just automatically go like, well, you're, you, you, it's like uh, mom gets the kids, case closed. This is this is Washington. That's what we do. With my kids at three and five years old, uh, I was left an only parent. And I'm not talking about a single parent. I was the only parent that those children had. Yeah, I literally dedicated my life to that cause. You sure uh, did. And, and that was, uh, it was not... You know, and, and I, I appreciate Ed's kind words. I really poured everything that I had into into those kids. Well, it shows, too, because your son, is your son bad at anything? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, honestly, you know, is your son bad at anything? You yeah, know, I don't know what, when he was 16 or 17 and he, he released that, uh, album where he's doing all of his own instruments and right? singing all together. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people loved it. Yeah. Like exactly. a lot of people. He, he has his own fan club on there. And, uh, I mean, he's gone away from that, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, like you say, I mean, what, yeah. what does that kid not do? Right. And yeah. then, and the then weightlifting. Uh, is, is yeah. That was another well. thing. The last time I saw him. I think he was 14, something, 14, 15. He wasn't old enough to drive yet. No, no. And, uh, you know, a little baby fat on him still. And I was thinking, okay, well, you know, and then you sh- you were like, oh, yeah, here's a picture of him now. And it was, and, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then your daughter, yeah. uh, you know, does such a good job of taking care of your, uh, your, your, uh, your father, and which um, basically runs the house. On top of that, um, Tom has some medical things. Yeah, going on. yeah. I, I, I mean, it's not something that I, I like to talk about. It's kind of embarrassing and, and a little humiliating sometimes to, to actually have to admit. Yes, I am disabled. You're disabled, um, full-time mach- master machinist at Boeing. Yes. Times is hard. Yeah. Times is real hard. Well, and. You know, I, I am grateful that it is a career that I'm able to do uh, with the disabilities that I have. But, yeah, I, yeah. I have a bad back. I have a ha- bad heart. And when um, he says bad back, he's got rods in his back. And when he says bad heart, he's had a valve replaced twice. Yes. Yeah. The- and that's uh, my uh, aortic root. Valve and root have both been replaced. It wasn't just some kind of little angioplasty thing or something like no, that. No, this is not a stint. In fact, the very first surgery, they screwed up. Yes. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. And, and you were uh, back in for another surgery. And what, I was like 19 years old for 19 that 19 years old. That was, uh, you know, right after we had to hitchhike through Idaho after that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right after that trip right. to Vegas, yeah. That's yeah, the trip to Vegas that never happened. That well, yeah. no, that that's happening now. Man, that was wild. And they gave you what? It was it was not a good survival percentage. No, right? especially for the second surgery. There was it was uh, you know, like a ten percent survival chance. Yeah, kind of it was thing. not good. Uh, yeah, it didn't look good. I remember talking to you right before you went to sleep and and you were gonna get up. The next morning, they were going to wake you up just to knock you out and take you into surgery. So I was the last person you talked to before before that. And yeah. we said our goodbyes just in case, and it was gut-wrenching. Yeah, well, it's yes. kind of 
Kind of sad that we actually lost Charlie in almost an identical fashion. Oh, but Charlie did it to himself. And when well, with you, yeah. it's genetic. I really want to say this about Charlie. Um, Charlie made a lot of mistakes and um, he made it impossible to hang out with him towards the end. He just, he really did. He made, he made it impossible to where every time you dealt with Charlie, he did something terrible and it just had to get away from him. And right before he died, he had a moment of clarity and it was looking promising. And then he died just, shortly yeah. after the operation or maybe even on the tape. I don't know. No, it was, uh, he contacted me in recovery after the operation uh, and then died like the the day or two after that. It's so tragic, too, because you know what? If there's any one person that would appreciate all the scalar stuff. Yeah, definitely. It yeah. would be Charlie. I mean, he, this would be his uh, died and gone to heaven. Maybe he's with us then because well, it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have done everything that I can to make this exactly what i think heaven would look like uh the recording studio the green room with a donkey kong game in it and <laughs> yeah your green room it's straight out of the 80s it's like it is if, so... if you had a, a dream in the early 80s of this could be the most perfect rec room ever that's right the coolest yeah. kid in school would have yeah. this rec room when in the in like the sixth grade or something of course it would belong to his dad and he wouldn't get to touch any of it but... that's right <laughs> Just like Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. <laughs> we got CRT TV with like an Atari and an Intellivision and a ColecoVision and uh, NES. And that's where video games stopped for me. <laughs> yeah. Got to have the old school CRT to put that on. Life-size uh, Iron Maiden monster. Eddie's standing right there. Yes. That, <laughs> that's a little over the top. But. I Yeah, I didn't warn you at all about that either. No, you just walked no. in and went, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you did a good job with that, though. I mean, if, if, if Eddie was real, I mean... Well, we've seen him enough at Iron Maiden shows. Right. But, but yeah, you, you did it. I, I was putting it together. I'd had the dream to, you know get the mask and get a mannequin and put my old Wilson's leather jacket on him. And then when it gets cold enough to where I need to wear the jacket, I'll, uh, I'll put my spiked wristbands on him instead and all that other kind of stuff. And so I'm putting, I'm putting him together and everything. And I'm just, uh, and then every time I'd walk past him that, that first day, it'd be like, Oh yeah. Huh? <laughs> and so did you get in here? Right. It's like, Hey, uh, hello, <clears throat> hello, Edward, old chap. So uh, I sat there and I thought about it. Now, you know, Gary's had a similar operation, valve valve replacement on his heart that you have. And I sat there and thought about it and went, I better tell Gary about this so he doesn't walk in and go, oh, this is the big one, Elizabeth, I'm coming. <laughs> you know, it'd be like if it had that happy Gilmore when it's like, remember that, that gator that got your hand? I got his head. Oh! <laughs> I, I I hope wherever Charlie is right now, he's a he's at peace. Yeah. And if he wants to come and hang out here, I'd be fine with that. And if he can find some way to communicate that doesn't involve corporeal ooze, <laughs> you know, because I I can't have any any uh, any ectoplasm on these guitars. You know, they're kind of delicate that way. Well, obviously, the pro the earthly problems no longer bother him anymore. Yeah, and he's got a you know a different perspective on existence. Uh, in his new state, he would be glad for what's happened for you. I mean, you are literally the Charlie in the chocolate factory here. You would be amazed at how many times people have said that they've made that comparison, and it's true. I am the biggest guitar nerd I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really am. I'm the biggest guitar nerd that I know. I know there are people out there that are as guitar nerdy as me. But I've never met any of them. <laughs> the ability to just wake up and deal with this every day and edit these podcasts with my dogs sleeping at my feet, you know, and um, as soon as the recording studio is done and things like that, what we're going to do is we're going to open this place up to anybody that plays any of our products. It doesn't matter what it is. 
you know, it could be, uh, what what, are you talking about? Like free studio time? Not only free studio time, but free studio time that, uh, we will play on our channel and also give them a free copy of, uh, the video that we shoot for them to use however they see fit. Well, it's Gary truly from his heart. He appreciates the people that, uh, the people that work for him and, uh, ah, he's, and the he, customers as well. He will not let anybody say that they work for him. They work with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's all he's, part he's of that. He's remarkable. He is. Yeah. You know what, you know why that happened? Because back when he was a little farm boy, uh, his dad was just one great, big mountain of a man and he was not somebody that you ever wanted to get upset with you because he was kind of in a perpetual state of pissed off (laughs) (laughs) so one day uh but they hired a lot of uh, a lot of hands you know they hired farm hands and uh one day gary being like oh well i'm the i'm the only son so you know i'm second in charge in this farm and he went over and he uh balled out one of the hired hands and the guy was like and just left and Gary's dad went over and went, who the hell do you think you are? And he made Gary go to that guy's house and apologize to him. He was like, nobody here is, is any more important than anybody else. And that happened at such a formative age for Gary that he was just like, yeah, it doesn't matter who it is. If it's like my lead engineer or the person that sweeps the floors or anybody in between, we're all equals we're all the same and we will all be everybody here will be treated with respect well that kind of humility uh you know honest and true humility like yeah. that it uh it really has a huge impact on your relationship with the universe i, I think know, so the, too the energy that you put out is what you're going to get back I, it's incredible too because you know uh in order to keep the prices where they are because our margins are so tight. Well, I see everybody around here pulling yeah. the belt tight and making the sacrifice yeah. so that we can continue to, I say we, because we. I, I've only been here a few days, but I feel like I'm part of the family. Here, well, you of, are but, now. Yeah. But you've, this, you've uh, always been a part of my family. Yeah. yeah. I like you better than I like my family. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, in order to keep the prices down and in order to pay the machine, he, the, the machinists make the most money out of anybody. Gary stopped taking a check from this company over a decade ago because he truly only cares about the people that own the bridges and he wants to make sure that the company continues to exist so that they can always get parts. There's it's just no ego. There's nothing... It, 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 it's the most altruistic guitar thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> it's, and that, that, you know, how many altruistic guitar things are there really? I mean, next to none now. And, it, and it's great too, because, you know, it's, uh, he, he really wants the people that most of them have been with him for like 40 years and he wants those people to have a good living. He wants them to be able to, uh, you know, take vacations and spend time with their grandchildren now and, and things like that. And, uh, in order to do that, he quit taking any money that this company makes undercharges people for custom work. You know, he'll sit there, and, but he truly loves the challenge. Uh, when somebody comes up with something that, you know, the initial gut reaction is, well, that's impossible. You know, he'll just kind of bite his tongue and go like, let me think about it. And then he'll come up with something and we're R and Ding so much stuff right now. Tom's seen some of it. He knows it's all top secret. Well, there's a lot of great ideas floating around here now. Uh, the whole thing about seeing a problem as a challenge instead yeah. of a defeat, you know? Um, yeah. He's just looking for the next thing to overcome. You know, we're talking so much hype here. I know it and, sounds like bullshit. Yeah, it does because it, it really and, does. And, I, and I just want to back up for just a second and say that like nobody's paying me a dime for this. Nope. And I don't have any kind of uh, other than my special relationship with Ed. I don't. I don't have any kind of connection to this company or any. Nope. 
you know, and I'm just truly speaking about what I see yeah. and, and speaking from the heart about just how amazing uh, Gary is as a, as a human being and the product that he's, he's dedicated to putting out. It's not my place to speak to the kind of other problems that Gary's dealing with in his life right now. Yeah. But the fact that he continues to, to, to keep the, the company and the customer uh, in first place always. Always. You know? Yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing. You just don't see that, you no. know, especially nowadays. There's so much, you know, just corporate and political corruption mm -hmm. everywhere you look. Um, yeah, I mean, I hesitate to mention the company that I work for because, you know, the whole thing, or even talk about it, because uh, uh, whistleblowers there have had a, a, bad, mm. uh, a bad run of luck. Are we speaking in code <laughs> about the lazy bee? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a lot of people there who really want to see that company turn around and become what it used to be, yeah. because it used to be based on those kind of ideals. You know, when, when the original guy the, that has the name, yeah. you know, when he created that company and dedicated his life to it, there hasn't been anybody driving that ship like that in a really long time. And uh, we're really hoping that, uh, you know, as things change in our future here, that, that we'll see a shift back to that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of leadership. And, yeah. and, you know, I mean... I, and I don't want to sound like a soundbite for that either. Um, but after being here, I feel real inspired awesome. you know, to see somebody with that kind of uh, love and dedication for what they do. Because in my position, I've continued to hold that yeah, all the way through. And uh, I love to manufacture things. And for me, it is about the puzzle, about figuring out how to make it happen. Uh, you know, writing the code and, and creating the setups and you know, designing all of it. And, um, it, it's, it's all just a, a big, wonderful jigsaw puzzle for me. And, and when something comes together so right, uh, you know, it's, it's really worth it. And it gives, it gives you a sense of satisfaction and a life purpose. Uh, you know, I want to see the energy that, you know, the energy that's here yeah. going out in the universe. I want to see that energy ending up everywhere. Because that's the kind of thing that this entire country needs right now, is is rather than greedy politicians and uh, you know greedy corporate people, mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, doing anything that they can to to get that third boat and that fourth mansion. Anyway, I'm getting too far into You're that. Getting I too need, far into I it. I need to back off. I but. will just say politicians hide themselves away. They only started the war. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, yes, indeed, Ozzy was truly genius. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many people that have that insight to be able to write the poetry that says things like that so truly and so clearly. How lucky were we to grow up in a time where that was the new music? Oh, I know. You know, I know. We and grew we grew up with like, hey, have you heard the new Ozzy album, Bark at the Moon? <laughs> hey, have you heard the new Iron Maiden album, <laughs> Peace of Mind? You know. I, I mean, it's just amazing. And then, and now, I mean, right behind you, there's a BC Rich Warlock that was a gift from Lita Ford to Gary at the NAM show. He had no idea that she was going to do it. And it's got both their logos on it. And she was just like, this is because I love you. You're awesome. Well, it's an amazing guitar, too. I oh, mean, if you could see God, it and yeah. hold it. In person, it's 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 just gorgeous. It is so yeah, cool. No, nope, you can't see. It's that. right behind me in the picture. It's like there. You, you maybe do one of those. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. It's that, there. No, no, that no, one, no, right that there. way. No, there we go. That's right. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This whole place is kind of a shrine to the history of electric guitar. It real it really is. Yeah. And um, you know what? We've got more non Kaler things than Kaler things in here because the philosophy is. In order to make the best, you need to know what everybody else is making, too. And there will be those who say, oh, I, I don't like the Kaler. And you know what? Most of those people have never even held one in their hands. Well, and that's kind of the sad thing is that they say that because they don't actually know. Yeah, but, and, then, uh, and then if you do have one in, in your hands, is it set up right? Because if it's not... Well, that's certainly true of any bridge, though. Or any anything. If you don't think that uh, something being properly set up is uh, is important, 
Go take one of the spark plugs out of your car and drive it around and see how that, <laughs> you know, it's the or same. flatten one of the tires. Flatten one of the yeah, tires. It's the go. same thing as having a guitar that's a little out of whack. One thing that I do want to say that's really awesome. We got a couple of surprises coming up here. Tom knows about them. We've got a couple new products that we're going to be announcing, but we have something coming up that I am so excited and so proud of. I get to be a part of this. Yeah, you were a big part of the design on this one. Oh, my God. And I can't say what it is, but we're going to have a special guest helping us do something that's going to be beyond amazing. And I get to be a part of it. And, like, not just a part of it, but a big part of it. I just got to say... You know, you got two black sheep sitting right here, right now. And I mean, I, I wish our audience was a little younger, you know, because I think that there are kids that really need to hear that if things are going not your way, then the important thing is, number one, find something about yourself that you can believe in and build. And then when you get that really good, pick something else, keep maintaining the first thing and just keep on doing that. And eventually you'll have all these skills and you'll be strong and other people's opinions will not matter at all. That's what you did with that very first machine. I remember you were telling me about, you know, getting to, uh, getting to, uh, machine school and just being completely overwhelmed, and you were like, I am going to master this one machine. And then you mastered it, and then you moved on to the next one. You're like, now I'm going to master this one. And then it started getting easier. Anybody can do anything you can. And, I mean, even with physical limitations, you can. Find a different way, but you can. Believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. There's nothing about Tom. There's nothing about me. There's nothing about Gary that makes us special. We just are too dumb to know when to quit. <laughs> I just, I have my own two cents uh, because what Ed's talking about is something that's so fundamentally important as a human being uh, in, in understanding and so many of us don't get it until it's far too late or if we even get it at all. because Such as Charlie. Yeah, we live, uh, especially in the United States, we live in a society where we have all of this fake stuff. Plum, you know, uh, uh, we're, we're surrounded by it all the time, every day. Uh, television, advertising, uh, media, all of it trying to tell us how we should think, who we should be, what we should care about, what we should think is important. And, God, and then the social media. Yes. Everybody trying to make it look like they've got the most perfect life. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I don't think anybody's not familiar at this point with the, the NPC on social media. And, yeah. you know, the tragic thing is, is that so many people are when they could be so much more. And, it, it is truly about uh, really finding your true self, your your inner, deeper I am, and find that soul and that heart, okay? And once once you find your heart, okay, and quit quit, you know, thinking that the little voice in your head is who you are, because what you are is so much more incredible and so much more important than any of the garbage that the little voice in your head is saying. And you can, speaking from your heart, you have all, that's where all your power is. That's where all your energy comes from. And that's where your connection with the universe is. And from that place, in your gut, in your heart, from the place that where what you know to be true and what you know to be right is so much louder than any kind of crap that somebody on the outside is going to try and tell you about who you should be and what you should be. You know, um, a lot of the reason that I got married and had children was because that's what I'm supposed to do, you know. Mm -hmm. But for me, having children was 
absolutely the greatest thing that that um, I absolutely needed to do it, not just because of of what the the media was telling me I needed to do and be, but because of who I later found out that I actually am. And what I later found out is actually important to me. When you align yourself with with that direction, with with what your heart is telling you, where it's taking you, whether it's caring for animals or climbing mountains, uh, but uh, there will be a way to find a career in it where you will have an incredible life and always be satisfied. And we live in a world of abundance where there's more than enough. And, and most of us as NPCs live our life terrified that we're not even going to make it at all doing the most basic thing. And we have so much more power and ability than we even realize. And, you know, as I sit here with Ed in this room with, he's got 125 guitars here and most of them are insane. I mean, just uh, beyond insane quality and capability. And, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, what I have is not who I am. Nope. No, but when I am what I am, then the reflection of what of what happens in the universe around me is literally limitless. Well, and the ability to create it's it's within all of us. The thing with all these guitars too, and and then there there are other things as well. And but I just see myself as a as a, as a steward to these things in, while I'm here, and then you know one day I will depart this mortal coil, and they will go on to do their next uh home and i just hope that wherever they wind up uh you know there's no way in the world anybody's gonna take an entire collection of 120 some guitars i think it's actually more than 125 now but uh you know i just i just hope that they'll they're well cared for which is a perfect segue to once again just really compliment the living hell out of your children because as we said before, you know, Tom's got some medical issues and you know what, uh, when, when things get rough, your family rallies around you. We do it together. You do it together. And I have always supported them from the very beginning and they have always supported me yeah. and we've always worked together. And for me, that's a beautiful thing because like Eddie was saying much earlier in this program, um, that is not the world that I grew up in. No. The, the world that I grew up in, my own mother was my biggest enemy trying to stand in the way and stop me from accomplishing anything. I will. And she was also my biggest critic, making up stories about me that weren't true, yeah. just so she had something awful to say about me. It, it, was, it, was, it was an amazingly horrific thing to, to witness. And uh, it just... There are so many examples, but there's the probably the perfect example that's really quick and easy <laughs> and funny to bring the mood down, you know, is or bring the mood back up, I guess I should say, would be one time we were sitting there and uh, some guy showed up and put a coupon for pizza on the door. And we thought, this looks really good. Let's go get some pizza. And Tom's mom walks out and goes... Oh my God! What are you What are you boys doing? Oh, we're getting pizza. Oh, that sounds great. I will have this. And it was like, mm, who invited you, bitch? But oh, no. at the same time, we were like, okay, you know, whatever. And she was like, okay, well, here's what I want. I want wheat crust with everything except for tomato sauce and cheese. And it was like, what? Now, not really, but something <laughs> insane like that. And so then uh, we wound up having to, cause she kept on changing her mind. We'd have to call up the pizza people and go like, hey, okay, just, okay, to hold that, do this, do that, whatever. This went on for about 45 minutes. And then finally she said, get whatever you want. I don't care. And we were like, fine. This coupon was for pepperoni pizza and that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so we called them back and we were like, two pepperoni pizzas, please. We got a coupon. And they were like, right on. And she was like, I don't even care. I don't even want pizza anymore. And so then the, she hears us, the, she hears the phone hang up and she comes out and goes, so what'd you decide on? Well, we went with the pepperoni, like an original. And she just was like, 
if it would have been anything but pepperoni, it would have been okay. And <laughs> that right there is pretty much Tom's entire childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too far away from mine either. <laughs> but well, it was a different time. Yeah, the was whole a different thing time. about raised on hose water and neglect. Oh God, <laughs> yeah, I have that T-shirt. <laughs> right. Well, it was true. It well, was literally true. Well, you know what though? I want to I want to bring it back to uh, to Kaler because you know <laughs> this is on Carrie's dime. Uh, something that's really cool about. Uh, Gary and about the way that everything worked out with him is because he had such a strong presence in his father uh, who was scary, but you always knew that he would keep you safe. He would kill for the family. And uh, there would be times when they'd be standing out there watching a hailstorm destroy all their crops and uh, Gary's dad would look down at him when he was a teenager and he'd put his hand on his shoulder and he'd say, well, Gary, there's always next year. And because of that, when Gary got sued to the point where nuisance lawsuit just to, just to wipe out all his money with legal bills, uh, he's like, have to file bankruptcy, have to do all this other stuff. I have all these employees that depend on me. What in the world am I going to do? That was when he switched to golf clubs. Not a man to be beaten, not a man to ever lay down. And that is why these bridges are amazing. This company is amazing. And the one thing that really sets a, sets Kaler apart from everything else is our customer service because we really care and we will do everything we can to make something right and to help that person and to and to fix things up it's within reason if somebody we we did have somebody uh write in and make threats and say call us a bunch of really horrible insulting things and stuff like that and i'm sorry but you're on your own if you're going to act that way you know we're not going to put up with it but you, those people are few and far between and you know what more than likely he wasn't angry about his bridge he was angry because he's uh extremely confused as to why his life didn't turn out the way that he was hoping it would so you know all i can say to people like that that are perpetually angry of of which i was one for a long time do that do that work on yourself man and it will pay off it will i promise i swear to god neither tom or i should be right here right now we should have died of so many dumb things <laughs> so many times <laughs> it is amazing it is amazing that we lived through all the idiotic things that we did came through the other side. And now you are the absolute best at what you do. I retired from 25 years of commercial deep sea diving to come and live my dream. How does it get any better? I mean, I just don't think it does. And you know what the best part is? Everybody's invited to join us. And that's not just the, happy woo woo philosophy that we've kind of been interspersing here, but also you're welcome to come and join this whole Kaler jamboree. Whenever you feel like if you're ever in Las Vegas, shoot me an email at Eddie at Kaler USA.com and I'll arrange a uh, time for you to come and check the place out. You, you know, show us what you got in our, uh, in our studio as soon as it's done. And I'm working on it feverishly. Please do. Please do. Absolutely love to love to have you. Love love to see you. It'd be great. You know, you got a problem with your bridge. We we're we're dying to help you. You got you got something that you need us to do that you're concerned we won't. Drop us an email. We'll probably take a shot at it. More than likely we'll make we'll make that dream thing happen. Or in a lot of cases, Gary will come up with an even better idea. 
And I feel like that's a pretty good place to stop. So thanks for, thanks for, thanks for making the trip, man. Well, it's been a real pleasure. I've had a great time. It's been totally awesome. Maybe we can do this remote from, uh, from Washington someday and, uh, take everybody on a little tour of our old haunts. <laughs> Those that are still there. Yeah. Yeah. Things change. Oh boy. No question about that. Well, the only thing that you can count on is that nothing will ever remain the same. Well, you guys, next week we will have a really, really cool guitar thing that nobody's seen yet because it is still in the prototype stage. But next week I'll show it to you. And um, then hopefully the week after that will be a great big announcement and it will be this thing that I can't even believe we get to do. I am so excited about it. And, um, there's a time limit. There's a time limit. So we can't lollygag. We got to get cracking until next time. It's been Eddie Kernan. Tom. <laughs> yeah. I'll try that again. Or do you, <clears throat> Joe, who are you this time? Are you Tom Innes or Tom Thompson? Well, I'm Tom Innes. Yes. Uh, I wasn't sure about having my last name on this, but yes, I'm Tom Innes. Thank well, you. Well, you could call yourself Tom Thompson Federal Way. That's well, the way that everybody... Well, I was that, that guy everybody... for a while, yes. I've oh, been, you were that guy for I've a while. I've had the time. opportunity to be a lot of different people in my life, and uh, uh, yeah, I am really grateful for the way that I was able to turn out. Yeah, that's a good thing. All right, guys. See you next week.